for CAD aspirants, we post one article per day, every day on our Facebook groups and pages and on the YouTube channel feed. And so we maintain, we curate, we see, read a bunch of things, think about what could be a wonderful article to read on that day to get that. So apart from a base of novels and articles and websites and blogs to work from, if you're looking for a daily hit of one recommended article, definitely do, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the YouTube community feed. Make sure you see that every now and then. Or if you're on Facebook, subscribe to the Facebook group feed. That is very useful because it's a curated list. Somebody's going to say you, tell you that this article right here is very good to read. Therefore, that's a compelling proposition. So do definitely do, do that. Reading list for cat. What is a set of books one must read or one should try to read? Not one must read in order to be ready for the reading comprehension section in cat. Right? So I'm going to give a list of books, a list of uh, general topics to read on. Uh, remember, this is a starting point. You should read where your mind takes you. Right? It's like going, to, going on a nice trip to a new place. You should walk around and find out. Right? So don't take this as a, as a take this like a guided an, an outline, but not as a definitive list. Right? If you, if you do have the reading habit, uh, then you already are comfortable with reading some novels, you have some preferences. I'm going to outline a, a list of books to begin with for people who do not have the reading habit. And so for, for, for that, my number one criteria is page turnability. The, the, the story should be so fast paced that the thrill of the story takes you to the next page and subsequent page and all of that. And so, a uh, lovely starting point is Dan Brown, Da Vinci Code or Digital Fortress. That's very good. Sidney Sheldon's uh, Windmills of the Gods or If Tomorrow Comes, they're wonderful books. Uh, Jeffrey Archer's Cain and Abel is a very good book. It's gripping. It takes some while to... You, you can't put the book down. In fact, Shall We Tell the President is an even better book if you, if you don't want to put it down. Uh, beyond this, there's a uh, couple of uh, nice authors. One, Alistair MacLean is very good. He writes uh, books like... Uh, like James Bond novels. So just keep turning the page. And that's the number one criteria if you don't have the reading habit to begin with. John Grisham has written a bunch of good books, fast books, if they're uh, legal thrillers. Some of them are slower, slower ones, but uh, this early ones are slow, but the subsequent ones, a bunch of those books are really fast paced. And so we are not looking for quality literature. We're looking only for, look, I've got to turn the page. I've got to go bam, 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 and, and get, in, get hooked on to a book. Start appreciating the idea of reading through a novel. And so even if I, before I go further down, I must tell you that all these books with names, details are available on a blog article, the link to which you will find in the description of this video. So don't worry about writing it down. You will be able to find all of that in one point. Right? So these are wonderful books to start your journey with. I forgot to mention uh, one very brilliant book, which is uh, Godfather by Mario Puzo. Right? So I'm going to forget there's lots of books that are coming rushing to my mind now. So I'll keep adding here and there. Any which way, check out the article. Right? So Mario Puzo is a fabulous author and Godfather is a wonderful book. When at last con, probably a thousand movies have been made on just that book. So you take any Indian language, any language in the world, there are at least two, three mo movies that have been inspired by that book in some form. And so uh, it's, it's a gripping book, well written and fast paced. And so that's a wonderful book to think about. Next, I'm going to move on to look, I've, I've, I've picked up a two, three books which get me going. How do I dive deeper? Which are the authors that I should pick to say? Sometime when you read, read one or two books, you say, look, I like this style. I like the way this author is writing. I want to read more novels with this author. So authors who have a body of work that you can chase and, and, and complete. Sidney Sheldon, Jeffrey Archer, Mario Puzo, uh, John Grisham, sort of wonderful authors who, who write reasonably well. Uh, the literature quality is very good. Jeffrey Archer's uh, English is very good. So these are the art, uh, authors who you can take and say, look, I'm going to read six books from this author. I'm going to read eight books from this author. They are the authors that you can change and, and get back on, get on top of. Next genre I'm going to go to is Indian authors. And the, the, the big daddy is um, obviously Salman Rushdie. And so the, the benchmark book is Midnight Children. There's a Booker Prize given to one book every year. And they give this award and say, this book is the best book released written this year. And then they gave a book which is Booker of Bookers, compiling all bookers of 30, 40 years and saying, this one book is the best of all of them. That is Midnight Children. And so he writes in this, uh, uh, in this style called Magic Realism. I'm not a big fan of that, but even I like the book. And so the, 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 the way history and political scenario and a story are, and characters are woven together is brilliant. And, and Rashti has command over the language like 
like nobody's business it's fantastic the, the metaphors he chooses they stick in your mind so they are they're brilliant uh, the, the book is very uh, it's a wonderful read but like some of the great movies it's a very yeah, reasonably tough read the first set of books set of easy reads so it's like you go to a restaurant and you watch uh, you you are eating a meal and you happen to see some t20 on board you can just switch on and watch any time and then after 5 minutes you can switch on and you can follow the score but a gripping test match you can't uh, you can't follow like that and salman rushdie's book is like that you need to set aside time and then and then read that so that is salman rushdie uh, the the elephant in the room as far as indian authors is concerned is chetan bhagat and so a uh, wonderful writer i'm I, uh, he, he the one thing i like about chetan bhagat is the story takes precedence and this there's no faffing around and doing going on a wild trip showcasing how great as english is or how great the literature is so as far as story and pace and plot are concerned he keeps you turning the page that's good but sometimes bhagat leaves you not fully satiated you don't finish the book with a feeling and, and a bunch of thoughts about the book you done with the book and you feel like okay i've read this book maybe i can read something else now you're not dwelling on the book which is the exact opposite of how you will feel if you read salman rushdie and so arvind adiga is a fantastic author the book is white tiger is a must read it's a fabulous 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 book you should definitely pick that up and read it right i read one more author called ashish tasir i think that's what his name he wrote a wonderful book i'm even forgetting the name it's about uh, but iti ithas of the, the way the world was i think that's what the, the, the name of the book wonderful book it was very very well written the other category of indian authors i'm going to put it as um, repackaged mythology and so so you streams from mahabharata and ramayana put together with a, with, a, with, with with some amount of reimagination with with thinking about the characters from a different point of view or writing the whole story from another perspective uh, the best book in that bunch by a distance is the book i read called palace of illusions by uh, chitra banerji the book i was so fascinated by it and i attended the literature festival so that i could have a, 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 a signature book from her so it's a wonderful wonderful author she's uh, she's i think she's written another book by called, called forest of enchantment which is uh, reimagining the ramayana palace of illusions about the mahabharata that's my, my all time favorite book uh, so the palace of illusions is a magnificent book the forest of enchantment probably less so right Uh, kavita kane is again a good writer the other uh, repackage myth uh, and I, i like some of the stories but i never took to the writing that it is too verbose too over elaborate taking too much liberty with the original prose whereas the chitra banerji devakurni was, uh, she was she was somewhat disciplined to the original script she's not going off on a wild goose chase saying this is not a sister but actually a mother and this how we can reimagine it so it's not imagination running running wild but within a framework so i really really like that so chitra banerji devakurni and kavita kane i would i would recommend them really well and so other favorite author of mine is pg woodhouse fine so i'm a big 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 fan of pg woodhouse fabulous fabulous writer i can go to an alternate place and enjoy humor written totally for a long time i just did not have the part in my brain which could appreciate good slow writing just not where where the fictional the story is not running ahead with a gun and plot and, and twist and turn but just taking things in like going on a nice drive around the, around the countryside and pg woodhouse is that and so uh, he he makes you appreciate the nuance in the language a lot of humor is in the writing so lots of times i would read passages and just not find what is funny about them i read a bunch of pg woodhouse novels and i started laughing at everything and so the this is not slapstick humor this is a wonderful humor because the way he he plays with the language the english language is like a toy in a sand so it's a fabulous writer but it's a tough author to wind your head around it's not someone if you have read four novels you shouldn't jump into a pg woodhouse you should read 7 8 10 and then say look let me pick up a pg woodhouse because it's going to be much slower than your you know, other other books and Uh, Douglas Adams is another um, English author who's brilliant. He's written this book called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, which is a phenomenal. Which is a which is a phenomenal. It's a, actually an audio series, which became syndicated as a radio series and then as a series of books. And so he wanted to write a trilogy, which became a four-part series and then a five-part series. So he, the, the fifth book he called as the fifth part of a trilogy in of four parts. And so it's packy humor. It's out there. Imagination goes. bonkers and that but again the english is brilliant the way it is written is really good so it's not just for the imagination but for the way it is written on humor going to satire the one of the best books on satire is this book called cash 22 it's on war and the futility of war 
And so this one character was a soldier and his entire book is his rant about how being a soldier is the worst thing to happen. Why he hates war. Why he hates the idea of uh, dying. It will make you look at the idea of war from a totally different perspective. But it's a really, really, really funny book. And so you'll read that and you'll see the characters in that book and you'll feel like, look, I know them. This guy who's this friend of a second cousin of mine, that right there is Colonel Cartcart. So I know that guy. This is exactly how he behaves. So the, the, the phrases, the, the, the terms, they stick in your mind and they're, they're brilliant, especially for the context we are in right now. That book, which, as a, which is an ode to not having war. It's quite appropriate and you should, should definitely pick that up. But again, it's a tough read because uh, I, I read it when I was in college and I didn't get it because it is a random narrator. There's no storyline. There's no plot, which is linear. It's a bunch of uh, topics mixed together, chapters bundled up, very uh, wacky. And I just didn't get it. I didn't get the humor. I didn't get the jokes. I didn't get anything. So you, you should have read for a while before you can pick up Catch-22 and really, really enjoy that. Right? So, uh, the other book by uh, which is non-fiction, which I which I think is a fabulous book, which any everyone should read, especially with one eye on um, being a, being participating as a citizen, and with with elections coming up, with doing MBA and staying in India. It's a book called India After Gandhi by Ramchandra Guha. Quite a lot of us know our history from only what we have heard. Uh, you've got to read history from a historian who who finds this. historians have sometimes they become wacky. They pick up something and create stories around it. Or they dwell in the detail and it becomes like a 40 page essay from the front line and you start feeling sleepy. But Ramchandra Guha balances the, the rigor part of it and with the readability part of it. You don't get bored with the writing because it's, he, he, he goes from topic to topic quite seamlessly and his wealth of experience where he can look at one topic from six viewpoints. That is fantastic. Only a historian can, can think like that. And so it's a fabulously well-written book. I so if you're a concerned citizen, you should jump in and definitely, definitely read that book. Your view of India, some of the characters India has had for 50 years, the way you see them will, 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 will change. And quite possible that um, you'll be surprised at uh, how misinformed you were before you read the book. And this book is, uh, is history. It's not bunk. It's not manufactured. It's not pseudo-history. It's well-researched and well-written. And you can see those research pieces. You don't have to worry about anything mentioned in the book. Okay. Next, I'm going to go on to the idea of single themed books. Some books like um, Free Economics, uh, Tipping Point, etc. Et et okay. so they start off as good ideas, like grand ideas. But they were, I sometimes feel that they would have been better off as a research paper. Something for 40 pages. So you read that book by Nicholas Nassim Taleb on, called Fooled by Randomness. I thought it was a fabulous idea. It was, it was an eye opener for a bunch of ways of thinking for about 70 pages. And then I thought the remaining 220 pages were just repetitions of that at 70 pages. There's, there's only one idea. There's only so much you can pitch it and sell it. The, the writers run out of steam rapidly. So you pick them up if you must, but I won't say you have got to do that. Okay. Another controversial uh, author you might have heard of is what we call Ayn Rand. So this is a, uh, a philosophy book. It's called uh, Objectivism. Uh, it's, it's, it's effectively it's a it's a it's a it's a tribute to capitalism, and so it's an interesting book to read in these times. It's been a backlash against Ayn Rand in the last ten years, but the, the, the when the Cold War was raging, Ayn Rand was the poster child for a bunch of economists from the U.S. and U.K. The whole Anglo-Saxon capitalistic model is, is, is in some form inspired uh, with the thought process associated with with Ayn Rand. And so, so therefore, it's a good read. You should know what that thought process is. What is the, the viewpoint that makes people rabid capitalist? So read that, and but then find your balance. Right now, there's a backlash against that. So you probably should read that and then say, look, what is the backlash? What, what are two sides of the coin? And the rest of it. Another author who I'm, I'm a big fan is called John Steinbeck. Uh, tough read, tough read. Uh, it takes enormous effort to power through the book. But then it sticks in your mind. You 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 ponder about that. Your the way you use English language changes. You read readers' books. Two of his best books are uh, *Grapes of Wrath* and *East of Ad East of Eden*. So he wrote this book called *East of Eden* and said, "There is but a book to a man." So he said, "One man can write only one book, and this book there is mine." He spent uh, years researching and, and pondering about that and wrote that. And and, and uh, uh, the the difference between reading articles and novels, especially well-written ones. Is for the novels the author spent years pondering about that, uh, putting ideas in place, creating a, a back 
story for a character etching a character vividly in your mind on uh, agonizing over the metaphor so there is a certain richness that a novel can give you which an, which a fleeting article can never article writers work with a 6 hour 8 hour 2 day deadline authors work over a 6 year deadline so it's, it's a body of work crystallized into 250 pages so it's a uh, sometimes that is why novels are compelling reads because not only do you enjoy the process of reading them they leave an impact in some form either in the way you think or either the way you approach sentence structures or either the way you take in other written information and i'm sorry if this has become a, a long video such as life the detailed description of almost all the books that we have spoken of here different authors their styles is given in the link on the on the description do go through them do i'm very 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 sure i've missed a bunch of fabulous books I mean, if i stand here for another two minutes i start thinking about a bunch of other other fabulous books this is not a comprehensive list of great books to read i'm sure there is no such list and so uh, the idea of reading novels and different structures is to make sure that you, you you get exposed to different sets of ideas and so this is one good starting point pick some if you don't have the habit look at this and say okay i can start off with this and start reading something if you do have the habit go where your mind takes you so you got to figure out your reading style and then keep exploring different things so this probably is a good starting point by, by no means by no means is this any form of comprehensive reading list for anything in life right so best wishes for you